that means we strip of 17 percent that's not too shabby also this second peak seemed to become really small or um, yeah what is what about the decode did this change this became slower that's not good the store should be unaffected <clears throat> yeah it's probably within the noise I don't know but looks very similar also from the shape of the histogram quite similar this one it looks really as if it became a bit I mean this could also be some code generation issue that the RDTLC is in a different place now but I mean this is good this is not so good so next step so we do not print the crap anymore next step look again at the generated code Um, what I want to look for because the searching in these code files is so stupid I want to probably look for LTP row is typical equals yeah. do I also have this in the refine oh this is also in the refinement is there a line that I only have here oh I can I can use this I guess where are we this is a variant zero six. which one are we looking for we are looking for i think zero 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 eight this one is the one we are interested in here this is the one we are running i think so we definitely have different different code now for these variants so let's see what 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 happens here we are interested starting with the loop everything before the loop does not really interest us much um, this is all gone optimized away very nice I'm not sure I'm not sure about what exactly this is doing here it seems it's pre-calculating an address here that it will use later probably okay and only now we have the rdtsc hmm. i think i really need some kind of sequence point to to avoid to avoid shifting this here
I'm not sure exactly if we are really measuring on this loop here. Yeah, here we are getting into the the pixel value calls. This is the pixel value calls are the next thing we need to we need to optimize. Yeah, this is now this is now much better optimized due to the constants. But of course, I mean these branches are really these branches are really expensive probably. Especially for small for small bitmaps where they go either way relatively frequently. So this goes on for a while. <clears throat> the context building is quite, quite a lot of code. Okay, that was it. That was the con context building. So, on to the decode. What the hell is go? Oh. Oh, 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 a, a part of the context building actually has been propagated into the decode. Because this is part of the shifting stuff that is actually going on. Yeah, that explains why the decode seems to be slower now because this code probably has been shifted here. That's inconvenient for, inconvenient for us to... Where is the actual call to decode? It's here. Yeah, so we're actually measuring also this stuff here. So what we should compare is only the sum of the two. Yeah, this has become much leaner now. <clears throat> this has become leaner. But surprisingly, I think it's not that much faster, right? Maybe even a bit slower. It's, I mean, sh for sure, this is probably dominated by the memory access, so by the cache misses and so on. Because there's so little code otherwise. But let's check, let's check what the sum of the, let's take the sum of the medians. So we had 85 and 35.5. That was the old sum of the medians. What do we have now? So 
71 plus 33.5. Okay, yeah, so this is better, but not by that much. Five percent better. Okay, that is one treat. So what's the next thing? That was a bit underwhelming that all this constant propagation that is now happening did not help more than that. I think that these branches going on in the context spring, they are still killing us. Uh, another thing that I want to do is because I think that most of the JBIG2 files that we will actually encounter will actually not use the adaptive template pos pit position, so pixel positions. Like all these will be at their default values. So What I want to do is I want to to make a variant that only works with only works with the default values. Let's do that. So we will define a const expression array. Of a T flags. And we will call that GBAT. Default GBAT Let's see that we have the the in the standard Yeah exactly these tables we have in the standard So we first let's do zero and zero so default for GB template zero and X template zero. One, two, three, four, not so bad. So we have three minus one, minus three, minus one. Two minus two minus two minus two. That is the default for templates you blah, blah, blah. Then we will do the following. We will add here. Default AT flex and 
let's say uses so it's clear that this is a, bo a boolean uses default at flags because this will be especially important for later optimizations because some some optimizations we really can only do for the default AT flags. Otherwise, it's hopeless. So We will only, first let's only check it for the one case we are actually testing. If GB template is zero and GB template X template one is not, not true. True. And then we run over the default AT. How did I call them? Yeah, default GBT, blah, blah, blah. Um, size of this. So we run over this array. Uh, whatever, let's see what works. So a T flags default a T flags is plus I um, actual a T flags is GB params GB a T flags pointer plus I if actual flex x not equal to forward flex x or actual flex y not equal default flex y uses default flex is false okay so we check that everything is at the default and if so if so so first, all of these will typically be the false variant. What is out of alignment here? Something is out of alignment. So, and now we have a special case. I think it's the, actually the first one is doubled for the default thing. uses default AT flags and not a template parameter. And now we can actually have this two, two times if uses default AT flags as Oh, I'm in the wrong one. I 
I'm in the wrong one. This one is the one we want to try. This is the one. So in this case, we don't have the funky adaptive ones here. We have, let's X them. I don't know if X is good, but yeah, we have the default ones here. So we will replace here the GB prompts, GB AT flex pointer. We will replace with default. I for sure have not remembered this correctly. I hope these are propagated as constants. Let's find this out. Oh, uh, I should have. Do I still have the code file? should put markers here. Got this so much. Which one is this? Yeah, now we are in business. We are looking for the zero, 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 eight. Oh, yes. And I should. Where does this get these? We should see it calculating something here. Before doing this comparison, so 10D and 11D. Those seem to be the, the X and the Y. So where are they? Where are they calculated? Here. This load effective address is calculating them. Yeah, this is a minus two. So here they are calculated. And the low, load effective address is used for the ones that have a known. This is minus three. So they are known. But then there will come some that are not known. So this is still a known one, minus four, is this right? Yeah, I think these ones are the more complicated ones. But we have two loads because we also need to, we need to load. The offset.
yeah move sine extension this is this is definitely one where we have this calculation and the addition move sine extension yeah those are the ones where we have this move sine extension those are the ones that do not use a constant offset we cannot use the load effective address as a trick to do the the adding okay so this is how it looks like now but Is this wrong? Oh, sorry. Where is this? This is in namespace control. And here we are in namespace arithmetic. <laughs> See how nice this tool is that, that I wrote on the screen. It's really helpful. Maybe it does not understand the type. Yeah, that was the problem. Again, this should actually not be namespace control. That does not really fit. But whatever. Maybe I should move this. I should make a note. Here I probably need A brutal cast. <clears throat> I mean, I could probably also make that. No, oh, is this not the right one? How was this? Okay, it does not have the flags, that's the point. Let's see if we notice this, this at all. I mean, ideally it could just reduce memory accesses that we have to do but it as i said we anyway need to do it because it will be important for a more more significant optimization later that we probably will not get to today so How are we doing? Okay. 
let's calculate the sum of the medians 6.5 plus 42 we are again down a few cycles it's so hard work just to get down a few cycles <clears throat> So, what is our overall reduction so far? Almost 12%. That's not too bad. Yeah, here we are. The storing is still the same. So. <clears throat> There's another thing I wonder about. If you look at the snippet from the <coughs> what Visual Studio told us, then we see that the renormalization function in the decoder had not only a lot of inclusive time, which does not surprise me so much, but it also had a significant exclusive time. And that is a bit surprising if you look at the function. It is really, really simple. Because most time should be spent here in this, in this byte in function. But that's not in the exclusive time included. So in the exclusive time, I mean, these shifts should <clears throat> this shift should be almost free. Also, the decrement here, the branch, the branch is good. Mm. Also, it would be interesting <clears throat> how often this loop typically runs. Because I think in <clears throat> almost all cases, this will only do one iteration. But definitely, this is something that should be inlined normally, I think. Okay, this is the renom D. Yeah, this call overhead is definitely too large for this function. Yeah, these are very compact. Uh, <clears throat> the decoder registers are really in memory, that's not so nice. <clears throat> Sorry. Let's see <coughs> Sorry, if a simple inline something does, does something here.
No. I don't think this was inland anywhere. It just seems to me a waste not to inland this little function. Yeah, it's still really cold. Where's it called? Call. Only in one case? Is it inlined in the other? Oh, it's, it's tail optimized. That's what has happened here. So it jumps to the same tail. Okay. So this is not inlined, but I mean, I need to find a way to really get past the garbage here and because otherwise I'm going insane. Where is this? Is it here? Let's see how this code looks. That's loading the context. This is something we cannot really avoid. What is this doing here? Is this from here? Yeah, it's probably from here. Yeah, there is, there is just probably a lot of there's a lot of um, unpredictable branches here. There's also a lot of branches here. Maybe we could do something here. to make it easier <clears throat> and we probably could get rid of this check here because the we can actually never enter the, the state. We can never enter the state that uh, 
the state that is fixed to a 50% probability in a state machine. This is something that shouldn't really ever happen. So it cannot happen if we do not specifically initialize the state machine to this state and this can never happen. So I wonder actually why the state exists. That's something we could try to get rid of. Oh, this is actually, this is an inline instance here of the renormed. Yeah. Liver loop twenty eight. This non printable character stuff is also annoying. Okay, here we have the loop. Yeah, this is an inline. This is an inline instance. Okay, so that we have. Yeah, these these are all in memory. That's not so nice. I don't see brutally obvious things to change here. Something we, that we could do is we could, we could search for 64 here and we could say that that we only That we only do this extra check if we really support this strange state that can never happen for some reason. I mean, if, I mean, it exists for some reason, but I don't know which reason. Because as I analyze the state machine, this can can never. So this is always the case, this condition that is less than less than 46. So that's just a tiny thing. Let's see if this is noticeable at all.
<clears throat> so, what do we have? Yeah, it actually got worse. So, we, of course, we have some noise here. So, that was not helpful. So let's let's remove it because it makes the code actually more ugly. That was not successful. <clears throat> uh, one thing that we could definitely try to get rid of some branches in the in the code is at least if we have this default template then if you look at if you look at the templates that we have they can only look back at most two two rows there are even some that can only look back one row. So for these templates, one of the checks, the vertical range check, is only needed in the first row or in the first two rows. So I'm thinking that we could special case the first two rows and not do the check in the other rows. How could we do that without completely screwing up our code? So in the first two rows, we have here a constant for y. So we could, I mean, we could definitely turn this into an inline function. Maybe we can, there's also maybe an, a way to force inlining, which I would really like to do in this case. We could also turn it into a macro and we have complete control. And then, so the pixel value is definitely always inline, that's fine. We would have a constant here. For these rows. I mean, also here we have, but, but this is currently not used in this in this code we're testing here. We have also a branch depending on whether y is the first row or not. I mean, we could try something crazy. Uh, let's copy the whole thing.
So we copied the whole thing. In the upper version, we will refactor it. So we will refactor it. such that the inner thing so that such that we have something like a row core so i can not call it bitmaps row core that gets an, a y value and how would this look like so it would have almost everything here It of course still does the X loop. The question is just if this will be inlined or not. And here we would just call the row core. I'm actually not sure that I, I want the GB params passed in here at all. The height we could easily make a variable. What actually are we using of the GB params? The height, the width, the width. If it's only the height and the width, we will make them just normal parameters. I think it's only the height and the width, right? Anything else? Oh, we have the yeah the the adaptive pixels. This also, but this we could also easily make. So, so I think I would like it not to pass the struct. Just to have a bit more flexibility, maybe. I could do that. But I mean, now it, it should just do the same as before, maybe with some more code overhead if this is not inlined. Okay, no. Oh, ah, because I did not pass the Y, right? X shift undeclared. 
but this is a constant expression so it doesn't hurt if we if we actually calculate it here okay same for I think same for this one right this is also these also completely constant stuff okay this could be a problem we will need to pass this in that's annoying but that's annoying mm. especially because it's an in-out parameter How is it called? I never remember. LTPO rule is typical. That is not so nice. Okay, the continue will just be a return in this case. So let's see how much slower we got now and I will stretch a bit. Yeah, we got a lot slower here. So this was not in line, it seems. So let's see if we have call, call, row, calls. 
Yeah, definitely. Not inlined. Stupid. Very stupid. Can we? Let's see if we can help that somewhat. Stupid not to inland that because it doesn't make the code larger because it, this is only one con one call site. So it will only make the code smaller. So this, this compiler is really stupid. Yeah, still called. This is so stupid. Okay, what are the compiler flags that we actually are using here? Actually, I think they are in the court, right? So we are using O2. We use maximize speed. What else do we use? OB1. OB1. Sounds nice. What is OB1? The OB1 option. Inline function expansion. Okay, we have force inline for our wishers. C plus plus. Okay, why do we or why does C make restrict our inlining? Why does it do that? Why do we have this OB1 here? Has anybody answered this question? Why? Let's change that. I, and hopefully we, we our option comes below the other one because yeah. It comes afterwards. The question is will the compiler honor this and what will it do? So ninja should, should be it's at least advertise to be smart enough yeah okay we get a warning that's okay for us for now uh, ninja should actually and it is smart, smart it is smart enough to rebuild when the options changes this is really a plus that it has over make So let's see how does the code look. 
the code should also say that it has the O2. Um, it is still not in line. This is crazy. You can only, stupid compiler, you can only win by inlining it. Do you not understand that? The code will be smaller and faster because it has only a single call site. Are you so stupid? Okay. You want it the hard way? How does this work, this force inline with just C++? How does this work? Where, is, where do you put it? Tell me. Let's see if, if this works. Has it been inlined now? Yeah, finally. Finally, the compiler did an inlining decision that can only win. Stupid compiler. I should really sh soon try to try different compilers and see if they do better. And if they don't put invalid characters into the listing files, which is annoying. So, 7149, wow, it's still bad, even worse, that is frustrating. So it seems that this, this made code generation worse. We have a row call function here. I think it's not called, right? I think it's not called. Mm. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it is definitely inlined now. It is definitely inlined and it's doing worse. So is the code generation inside? Has that become worse? We'll have our measurements point shifted. This could also be the case. Which version are we looking at here? Okay, this one, we want the zero, zero, zero. No, we want the zero, zero, one, eight. Huh? That's the one we want. That is the one. So let's at least try now that we already have this so far, let's at least try to make some special casing. So I think we can get rid of the inline here. So the idea would be to Start the loop actually at only at the second line. And have this twice here. One for zero and one for one. This will of course make the code larger, which is also not nice because we also need to fit the code in a cache. The question is whether it is smart enough now to optimize away the, the range checks in the generic one. What are we looking at? A row call. I do not want the row core. Yeah, I want one like that. But I want the zero, 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 one, eight. This is still both of the comparisons here. Why does this still do both comparisons? even for the zero. Yeah, 
actually for these for these we actually never have to check because for those that are on the same line as the current pixel we never have to check but still i i don't understand why so why should be Why should be a fixed zero in this case for the first one? I mean, maybe we are not looking at the first one. And all of them have the two jumps still, the two branches there. Why? Is the compiler too stupid or? What is the case? What is going on? Did we ninja everything? Yeah. What is the case? Why is this not helping? At least in... Wow. We broke the code. No. That's horrible. How did we break the code? Do we have bitmaps that are so small that they don't have Could it be that we have bitmaps that are so small that they have only one? Oh, this is fine. This does the check anyway. I mean, we should probably always assert that the eight is positive. But this is definitely an opportunity that we can we know that for some pixels we never have to check the y and for some we never have to check the x and for some it can only fail in one direction this is also something that we might want to do So how much do we have? So the, now it works again. That is a bit better. We squeezed some cycles, it seems. We are at almost 16% speed up. Okay. But are we actually optimizing away these checks here? <clears throat> 